Hi everyone, Scott with Cyberscribe.org, and in this video I'm just going to give you a little tour of managing your Zen server, uh, virtualization server, with the Zen Center Management Console. So both of these you get from ZenServer.org. You do your uh, Zen Server ISO, install that onto your virtualization server, and then you get the IP, and then you connect, install Zen Center, and then connect with that. So when you let me get here. This is what you'll first see when you install. Uh, you won't see the Zen server here. How you get that, you just right click and add and then put in the IP and then whatever username and password you created when you installed Zen server. And then when you do, your Zen server will pop up. Or I think you can give it different names and all that stuff. So here I'm just showing all of my virtual machines. Each, uh, like I said, you know, if you're familiar with VMware, or even Hyper-V, it looks very similar because they, they have similar functionality. So you have your virtual machines, your objects on the left side, you have your tabbed windows on the right, so not too different from other, uh, like I said, other vendors. So here, what I have is, I think the CIFS ISO library, I think that's always there. So I attached mine to my local uh, desktop here where I have all my ISOs, and then when it connects it connects to that and then it has that share so basically you just need to you know set up the share on your Windows system and then just point it to it and it'll connect data zero for me this is where I'm just loading the Zen server itself from I'm not putting any virtual machines on this previously I was able to boot off of a thumb drive and then just load ESXi into memory I wasn't able to do that here. Maybe there's a way. I didn't find it. So, data one and data two. Data one is where I have all my virtual machines. Template provisioner. So, you know, if I have 15 gigs on my CentOS box, it puts it here. Default. That's that check mark. Data two. This is just uh, other memory storage or memory pools that I created. So, for example, I wanted a, another drive for my server 2012 so I created it here and then go to my Windows Server 2012 go to storage and then either attach disk or add and then you'll see see that so it would be under here under data 2 it's not right now let me just let me just detach this yeah yeah okay let's see and then this should go away okay now let's attach and then just show you and then there you go so that's just adding another disk because sometimes you don't always want to just you don't know how big your drive is going to be uh, so I've also looked to see and uh, have like shared pools and stuff like that uh, I wasn't able to find that but I don't really need that so I'm not looking too hard for it it's not that big of a deal and uh, so there's that now you know, you have all these uh, things up here, new pools. This is, you can have multiple servers and you can manage multiple virtualization servers from the Zen Center here. And disaster recovery, that's how you can, let me just show you. Yep, hold on. Okay. This is kind of interesting. It's almost, if you have extra hardware, it's kind of worth doing. So fail over, fail back, test fail over and then all that stuff. Uh, depending also, this might depend on your license. I mean, I'm using the free version. Maybe this functionality is not there. I didn't try it. I didn't get to it. So just be aware. I mean, I don't know if it would work or not, but it looks like it's actually might be possible. So there's that. You know, you have a lot of these are just similar. These buttons and these things are, it's a lot of the same stuff. So uh, let's see here. You have your updates. So you can search for your updates and then I am look to be up to date. Uh, if you're not, there's there's a whole bunch of uh, other updates. So, and then just, you know, choose the newest one. And I think you should update for all of the other, uh, all of the previous. But that's just in tools right there. And server status report, you can create a zip file and dump it out to your uh, your desktop or wherever. And it's uh, there's a whole bunch of, it's a bunch of logs and things like that. So there's that, and uh, you know nothing much else. I mean, this is uh, let's see. Do we have license manager stuff like that? So I didn't. I mean, I just downloaded this, so 
I don't know if they needed a, wanted a license for it, but uh, I probably I might have a license, but it's a free open source license anyways, so it's not like I'm going to get anything out of it. I haven't run into anything that I was doing on here that said, oh, well, you need a license for it. So, you know, take it's there. Just be aware. All right, so uh, let's just really quick notifications. These are just some logs, saved searches. I don't do, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't have the infrastructure for some of this stuff. Uh, objects, this is a little bit useful, but it's, like I said, I mean, you're looking at a lot of the same stuff. Snapshots is kind of useful, uh, but this shows just what, where the, uh, you know, what, what snapshots you have saved. So I have a uh, snapshot, and then I just did uh, uh, Windows Server 2008 snapshot right there. So let me, and then you have a little bit more information on your networks and things like that. So that's objects. I pretty much just stay on the infrastructure section here because you're getting all the information anyways. So it's just some things on your Zen server uh, tabs here is, you know, you have your uptime, you have what's available, memory running, things like that. Gives you a little, a little chart of what's running and how much memory you have currently allocated. Storage, like I said, these are just the storage, my disks, and then the uh, ISO library. You can add another one, and you can say point it to another, or if I had like a, like a, you know, well, I actually have a NAS now, and I could point it to that, and then just, you know, maybe move my ISO library off of my desktop and onto the NAS. So that's possible. Uh, networking, you can create your own network. So I have two NICs, so these are automatically created, and when you see there two NICs so when you create a virtual machine if you however many NICs you have the default is going to be that virtual machine is going to be signed to both of those networks okay not that one hold on not that one okay this one so two NICs and it's automatically assigned these ones are special because this uh, my 2008 server is kind of the pivot point into my uh, the lockdown network of my security lab so that's why that's there and this is the lockdown so what I had to do for this server is I had it was showing up like well, it was showing up like the domain controller without without the lockdown so I removed both of my network cards on the 2008 secure so this is locked down it can only really connect with any other uh, any other machines on that lockdown network, so that is the networking part. Uh, your NICs, you know, network interface cards, console. This is, or console is nothing really to see here for the Zen server itself. Performance. This is actually pretty good, so you can see what you're you know when you're doing stuff. You can maybe just periodically check it out and see if you're if you're kind of stressing your your hardware a little bit too much or if you have room for growth obviously I have some room for growth here and search tab so the search tab this is going to be the same tab on you see this all over the place but we'll just keep here so these are let me oh, hold on alright so Windows Server 2008 R2 secure it's currently running 0% of CPU is being used and only 400 megs of a gig of RAM is being used. So the reason why you can see these the memory usage is because I installed Zen server tools on these. So it's pretty easy it just uh, it's like uh, VirtualBox guest editions or VMware tools where it's just it, it you know, basically uh, creates or pops open a CD drive virtually with the tools and then you just install it from that CD drive. So Metasploitable and OWASP I haven't uh, haven't done that yet but uh, it's it's good to it's like I said it's good to see how much memory you're actually using as opposed to oh geez you're using two four five you know six seven eight gigs uh, it's kinda it's useful like I said here because then you can know how much to overcommit memory wise you know I have 16 gigs of RAM I can probably overcommit to like 20 or 24 gigs based just on the use 
and that's how you would see that here, how you see that Zen server tools. So that's one good thing to know right there. And let's just go to a Windows server and tabs here. Same, same kind of tabs. Here you can also go and say, okay, so fix memory, but you can also dynamically allocate memory. So you can say there, this is my, okay, 2008 R2. And I can say that, you know, max and min is there. And then that's right. That's right there, I believe. Let's take a look again. Yeah. So, but then again, we go to search and we're seeing we're using uh, that. So that's a, this is another way to kind of uh, manage your memory is doing it, doing it like this. So console, this is, let's reattach. So this is what you'll get and basically you can either switch to remote desktop or just pop out, undock, so I just pop out and then this is where I'm at, I need to okay, I'll log out in a minute, but basically uh, there's, you know, find your console, there you go so reattach uh, performance, this is performance just for this virtual machine itself so snapshots this is like one of the real nice things about virtualization is you can just you know you want to test something out take a snapshot first and then like we just did one and uh, you know then just break stuff and then you can go and revert back to the snapshot so that's kinda nice just remember that snapshots take up storage space so you can't have like 20 snapshots you probably want to go and consolidate some of them again the search tab just showing a little bit more of the uh, more of the actual used memory, not the total memory that's available to them. So that's that's kind of nice. And uh, remember, Zen server tools needed for that. So really, other than that, I mean, that's kind of you know like uh, I'd say a basic introduction. Uh, you know, there's more functionality to it, of course, but for basic basic stuff, you know, you can create different networks and you know that's that's you know one of the useful things you can create different storage uh, you can create new drives attach them to different places so uh, you know nothing really too spectacular nothing I mean that you wouldn't be able to do on other hypervisors like uh, uh, what is it Hyper-V or ESXi for VMware but you know this is it's it's pretty good functionality there's nothing uh, like I said, other than booting from the thumb drive, which I was able to do on ESXi, uh, I, w I w didn't find out how to do that here. That's kind of the only lacking thing for Zen uh, itself. But that's not really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. So uh, that's all I had for this video. Like I said, just, uh, you know, hopefully you're a little bit more familiar with Zen Center and how it runs your Zen server. And uh, so, like I said, uh, that's good for me, and uh, stay tuned for future videos.